people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Viewers, I'm your host Lipakshi Kurana with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Never seen before picture in the realms of global geopolitics surfaced as Papua New Guinea Prime Minister James Marape flouted protocols and set aside Prime Ministerial pride to bow and touch his guest Prime Minister Narendra Modi's feet as a mark of welcome and respect. It wasn't an isolated incident when PM Modi received unparalleled admiration during his three-nation visit recently. From President Biden of the United States, who sought Modi's autograph on the sidelines of the G7 summit to PM Albanese of Australia, who called him a boss, leaders across the board shared praise on PM Modi in a manner that looked no shot of a fan moment. The impact of India's pro-people, globe-oriented foreign policy has been so remarkable that India has not just garnered everybody's acknowledgement, but there has also been an overwhelming interest from all corners of the world to forge a coveted alliance with the leader of the Global South. And the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi! PM Modi received a rousing welcome as thousands of Indian expatriates in Australia gathered for a community event in Sydney to mark his arrival and celebrate his unparalleled popularity on a global scale. The fervent fandom was led by Prime Minister Albanese himself who referred to Modi as the boss and Indians as the disseminators of the true ethos of democracy. You have brought the spirit of the world's biggest democracy to Australia. And you have helped make our democracy stronger and more inclusive. You've strengthened Australian society, bringing our country the benefits and riches of such a beautiful and diverse culture. And I'm so proud that you have made Australia your home, that you see your life and your future here. It is the result of India's diligent diplomatic endeavours and an effective foreign policy that Indians around the world enjoy widespread esteem today. As a leading voice of the Global South, the decision makers in the South Bloc do not discriminate between the size of the nations. Leading with the philosophy of the world is one, India's export of critical COVID vaccines has not been forgotten by nations that had limited means to procure the life-saving medicines. This is the reason they look up to India for assistance and guidance in all forms of crisis, be it socio-political, economic or singularly centred on a single event. Your sisters and brothers of Pacific sitting here have people exposed to sea level rise, uh, salination of the agricultural land, loss of land for the nation's security. These issues face us. We need a big third voice to be active for the small island nations at G20, at G7. We appreciate your presence with us at FIBIC. You are the voice that can offer. Our issues at the highest as advanced economies discuss on matters relating to economy, commerce, trade and geopolitics. India, which is currently chairing the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation, among various other significant political chairs, has assured the island countries that she would assist them under all circumstances. Digital technology ho, ya space technology, health security ho, ya food security, 
क्लाइमेट चेंज हो या एनवायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन हो हम हर तरह आपके साथ है एक्सलेंसी आपकी तरह हम मल्टीलेटरलिज्म में विश्वास रखते हैं फ्री ओपन और इंक्लूसिव इंडो पैसिफिक का समर्थन करते हैं There has been a growing global consensus that India is one of the most transparent, accountable and democratic states in the world. Have you ever wondered why India, which is not an active member of one of the most powerful groupings in the world, G7, is invited every single time a summit level meeting is held? The reason India is indispensable in any decision making forum and it is not just the sheer size of the country but her consistently objective policies that have garnered her this reputation it is also important to note that some members of the G7 back India's inclusion into the UN Security Council Prime Minister Narendra Modi has continuously topped approval rating charts He has been accorded with the highest civilian awards by several countries again a testament to country's acknowledgement of indian efforts towards strengthening bilateral camaraderie and global harmony while on the side indian diplomacy has focused on integration and inclusion of all and on the other it has sought to secure peace and prosperity for the benefit of the world Prime Minister Narendra Modi also met President Zelensky of Ukraine and pledged Indian assistance for an end to the protracted Russia-Ukraine conflict. मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाता हूं कि इसके समाधान के लिए भारत और निजी रूप से मैं स्वयं हमसे जो कुछ भी हो सकता है हम अवश्य करेंगे। यूक्रेन में चल रहा युद्ध पूरे विश्व के लिए बहुत बड़ा मुद्दा है पूरे विश्व पर इसके अनेक प्रकार के प्रभाव भी पड़े लेकिन मैं इसे राजनीति या अर्थव्यवस्था का मुद्दा नहीं मानता मेरे लिए यह मानवता का मुद्दा है मानवीय मूल्यों का मुद्दा है युद्ध की पीड़ा क्या होती है ये आप हम सबसे ज्यादा जानते हैं whether it was helping war torn afghanistan or directly financing island sri lanka to emerge from a deep crisis indian aid doesn't seek returns or comes with any attached strings Indian foreign policy has been pro peace pro people and pro prosperity and she is one of a limited group of countries that have lived up to their ideals without failing Moving on as many as 16 people are currently under trial for the suspected involvement in the violence that followed Imran Khan's arrest a few days ago Following Imran Khan's imprisonment on May 9th, Pakistan started a brutal crackdown on individuals responsible for the disorder and vandalism. However, many have expressed grave worries that those charged will be tried in military courts which are notorious for their covert trials that involve the worst kinds of human rights violations. Following the arrest of former Prime Minister Imran Khan earlier this month, a Pakistani court in the eastern city of Lahore this week turned over 16 civilians to the military for prosecution. These individuals are suspected of participating in violent protests. Following the incident, the military declared that the suspects will be tried in military courts, which are often used to punish state adversaries. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan was arrested on May 9. The Supreme Court declared the arrest to be illegal 2 days later. Following Khan's detention by the anti-graft agency, protesters stormed military installations and set fire to the home of a senior general in Lahore. The Radio Pakistan station in Peshawar, which was also destroyed by the crowd, was visited by Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif this week. Jinhone ye tod phod ki jinhone 
ہدایات دیں جنہوں نے پلاننگ کی جنہوں نے فوجی تنصیبات پر حملے کے لیے اکسایا جنہوں نے گالم گلوش کیا اور جنہوں نے سیولین تنصیبات پر حملے کیے وہ کسی رائت کے مستحق نہیں ہیں Observers fear that military court proceedings are often a violation of human rights of those who find themselves being tried there. The legal system used by military courts is distinct from that used by civilian courts. Outsiders are not permitted and media is not permitted during trials. Rights organizations have criticized the process's secrecy. The protests took at the same time as Pakistan's worst economic crisis in decades which included record high inflation, sluggish growth and months long delays in IMF assistance, raising fears that the nation may stop making its international payments. Pakistan's military is accused of holding the real sway over the day-to-day -day political affairs of the country and has been accused of exercising brute high-handedness to muzzle the voice of dissenters and opposition parties or leaders who do not toe its line. جو فوجی تنصیبات ہیں وہاں پر یہ طے پایا ہے کہ آئین نے جو اس حوالے سے جو اختیار دیا ہے فوج پاکستان کو اس کے تحت جنہوں نے فوجی تنصیبات پر حملے کیے اکسایا منصوبہ بندی کی ان کو اس قانون کے مطابق گرفت میں لیا جائے گا یہ فیصلہ ہو چکا پارلیمان میں بھی اس کی قرارداد پاس کی گئی تھرو تھری کوز دی ملٹری ہیز کنٹرول دی ساؤتھ ایشین کنٹری فار افلی ہاف آف اٹس ہسٹری دی ڈیپ اسٹیٹ آف پاکستان آرمی از آلسو اکیوزڈ آف انوالومنٹ ان دی کنٹریز پولیٹیکل افیئرس Critics have time and again slammed the military leadership of Pakistan, citing it undermines the democratic values of the country and disregards the principle of civilian supremacy over military leadership. On the other hand, the military argues that it has been instrumental in safeguarding national security and stability. It says it never interferes in Pakistan's politics unless the country is faced with overwhelming crisis or the civilian government is unable to address the issues of common people. And moving on, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan is facing one of its most severe human rights crises amidst the prevailing political and economic chaos in the country. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan in its latest report has highlighted the failure of the legislator, judiciary and the executive in fulfilling their duty to safeguard citizens from political and economic exploitation. The incidents of enforced disappearances, the safety of religious minorities or lack thereof, and the diminishing rights of women and children have remained a grave cause of concern. Come with us as we discuss the swift decline of human rights in Pakistan. The year 2022 was chaotic and fatal for the people in Pakistan. The devastating floods last monsoon led to extreme poverty, high inflation, medical crises, and unemployment. The country's economy not only took a nosedive, but a political upheaval unfolded following the ousting of former Prime Minister Imran Khan through a no-confidence motion in April of last year. These calamities added to the woes of the people in Pakistan. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, in its almost 300-page annual report, has raised concerns over Pakistan's human rights situation, not only economic and political, but security as well. Terrorism-related incidents in the country claimed 533 lives in 2022. The report hits the government hard for their growing intolerance towards dissenting opinions and free speech, and for the enforced disappearances of political activists and journalists. The report also highlighted custodial torture and sedition charges against political opponents, journalists and activists. 
the reason why enforced disappearances are increasing or the, this method is used by the uh, by the military again the military is involved in this is because um, they do not want uh, they do not have a justification for uh, you know imprisoning people so they just put them in secret prisons these are political prisoners but they have no political representation because uh, they're in secret prisons and where they're tortured where they're you know sometimes even killed the instances of enforced disappearances of political activists, journalists, and human rights defenders remains a grave concern for the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan. As per its report, at least 2,210 enforced disappearances cases remained unsolved by the end of 2022. Last year, Punjab reported 57 cases of enforced disappearances, whereas Sindh reported 67 cases. Khyber Patonkwa reported 202, and in Balochistan, a staggering 257 such cases came to light. The Human Rights Commission is further concerned by the extrajudicial killings of missing persons in the country. It cited an incident in July of 2022 when the Pakistani intelligence agency, the ISI, claimed killing nine militants in the Ziarat area of Balochistan. However, after protests by the relatives of these missing persons in Quetta, it emerged that five of those killed were forcibly disappeared persons and were not, in fact, militants. Pakistan still uh, thinks that the, these are the people whom I have to suppress and oppress them till I have, you know, muscles. So they are using their muscle to control the land. Uh, on the other side, the Baloch people are they are being uh, uh, systematically eliminated, in, uh, disappeared by force, uh, displaced from their uh, areas, uh, facing extrajudicial killings. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan also indicated their concern for the declining press freedom index as the country ranks 150th amongst 180 countries and territories across the globe. The report cited the journalists and the vernacular press who said that they were still compelled to toe the government line and could not report independently for fear of reprisal by state and non-state actors. People's issues from Balochistan and Khyber Pathankwa received negligible coverage in the mainstream media, especially on private TV news channels. This was especially true of issues such as the ongoing conflict between the state and Baloch nationalists grievous human rights violations, such as enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings, poor governance, as well as matters of economic and social concern. As the economic and political situation remains grim in Pakistan, the human rights situation is expected to deteriorate, leaving Pakistani citizens with one more area of despair in their already grim lives. And time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Seven people were killed and at least 18 were injured after the roof of a school's gymnasium collapsed during a storm in Pichit province, over 300 kilometers north of Bangkok last week. Emergency personnel worked through the wee hours of next morning to rescue injured victims from the wreckage and recovered the bodies of six people which included students, janitors and parents. The death toll later increased by one when a six-year-old boy succumbed to his injuries at the hospital after being rescued. Residents in the area reported that the collapse took place amid a violent storm. Speaking to local media, Thai PBS, an unidentified resident said, At first, I did not know what it was. I didn't know it was the wind. Local media also reported that a temporary relief center is being established near the disaster site. Thailand's meteorological department announced the start of the monsoon season on Monday and issued a warning for heavy rain in Upper Thailand throughout this week.
Iran successfully test launched a ballistic missile with a potential of 2,000 km range this Thursday. State media said two days after the chief of Israel's armed forces raised the prospect of action against Tehran over its nuclear program. Iran, which has one of the biggest missile programs in the Middle East, says its weapons are capable of reaching the bases of arch foes Israel and the United States in the region. Despite US and European opposition, the Islamic Republic has said it will further develop its defensive missile program. The state news agency IRNA said the liquid fuel missile had been named Khaybar, a reference to a Jewish castle overrun by Muslim warriors in the early days of Islam. Israel, which the Islamic Republic does not recognize, sees Iran as an existential threat. Iran says its ballistic missiles are an important deterrent and a retaliatory force against the United States, Israel and other potential regional adversaries. On Tuesday, the top Israeli general mooted possible military action against Iran as efforts by six world powers to revive Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal have stalled since last September, amid growing Western fears about Tehran's accelerating nuclear advances. The deal, which Washington ditched in 2018, imposed curbs on Iran's nuclear activities that extended the time Tehran would need to produce enough fissile material for a nuclear bomb if it chose to do so. Iran denies seeking nuclear weapons. And the glorious legacy of valiant Indian king of 16th century, Maharana Pratap, was celebrated on the occasion of his birth anniversary. India's central Madhya Pradesh state held a number of events to commemorate Pratap. A huge crowd gathered in Ujjain and attended the festive events to honour the courage, bravery and valour of the Rajput king. He was a brave warrior, a powerful ruler and a war strategist. One name, Maharana Pratap, runs in the blood of every Rajput. People in India celebrated the birth anniversary of Maharana Pratap with great pomp and grandeur. A large number of people worshipped him in Ujjain, Madhya Pradesh. Today, समस्त राजपूत समाज सारे देश में वीर सिरोमणि पराक्रमी प्रातः इसमणी महाराणा प्रताप जी की जयंती हर्षोल्लास और उत्साह के साथ मनाने जा रहा है और सारा शहर बड़े उत्साह उमंग के साथ इस जुलूस का महाराणा प्रताप जयंती के जुलूस का स्वागत कर रहा है People took out Shore Yatra showing their valor and all the Rajputs of Ujjain city participated in it. Dressed in vibrant saffron-colored traditional Rajput attire, people of all ages were seen participating in the event. The tales of Maharana Pratap and his wise elephant, Ram Prasad, have been narrated by people from generation to generation. Chetak was the loyal and brave horse of Maharana Pratap, with whom he had a close relationship. Sauravani Maharana Pradab Jai ki jayanti ke hausar bhai shor yatra nikali ja rahi hai. Aaj saara Rajput ikatta ho kar pure shahar ke andar is yatra mein chal raha hai. Maharana Pradab ji Rajputo ka gharo the. The sword which is a deadly weapon and a symbol of power is an ornament for a warrior. Maharana Pradab used to carry two swords. If his enemy was unarmed, he would present a sword to his enemy before the fight started. People remember him for his sword fighting techniques. Well, the history of Indian culture is rife with bravery and self-sacrifice tales. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. 
we are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.